Okay, so this is for the subject monetary policy and central banking. We have here um, a financial statement of BDO Unibank for the period uh, 2014. So in this video, we're just going to uh, go over the content. So some sort of overview. Okay, so let me familiarize ourselves with the content of the FS. What they uh, what they are uh, required to include in their reportorial requirements. Okay. So this one is being required by the SEC and normally um, partnerships and corporations that are registered with the SEC, uh, the required documents that they submit to the SEC are public documents. So you can actually order financial statements of, you know, any company registered with them through SEC. Uh, they have this, what they call this, a website wherein you can order them, all right? They just have to pay for uh, yep, the printing costs and the shipping costs, of course. Okay, so let's go over. Um, this is SEC Form 17A, Annual Report Pursuant to Section 17 of the Securities Regulation Code and Section 141 of the Corporation Code of the Philippines. I think this is an additional requirement if the corporation is also publicly listed. Okay. So you have the period covered, fiscal year ended 2014, SEC identification number, tax uh, identification number, registration name, address, telephone, and then this one, uh, securities registered, you have the common stock and then the preferred stock number of shares, okay, bar value, and then um, they have these statements okay, on the aggregate market value. Common stock, so you have this share price at the end of the period 109.80. Okay, and then table of contents for this particular report you have the business and general information, their properties, legal proceedings that so they also need to disclose if they are, you know, engaged in a legal battle. And then you have the submission of matters to a vote of security holders. Second part, operational and financial information, market for issuers of com common equity and related stockholders matters, management discussion and analysis or plan of operations, and then we have financial statements, changes in and disagreements with accountants on accounting and financial disclosure. So they do uh, have discussions with uh, the accountants, sometimes also with you know, internal audits. Control and compensation information, directors and executives of the issuer, executive compensation, security ownership of certain beneficial owners and man in management, certain relations and related transactions. And then part four, you have the corporate governance. Part five, exhibits and schedules. They have the list of branches that they have. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you have the signatures and exhibits and annexes. Um, at the latter part, they have included the audited financial statements and independent auditors report comparative for the periods 2014, 2013, and 2013, and then the supplementary schedule supporting the access. And then they also have the annual corporate governance report. Okay. So the first part you'd see, you know, business information, um, establishment, the form, and year of organization. They so have your BDO Unibank Inc., originally known as Acme Savings Bank. Okay. Acquired by the SN Group in 1976. So information per, uh, relevant to their establishment, okay, operations, how they came to be. Okay. And then they have their subsidiaries, percentage of interest held. So they have a lot, okay, PCI. Is also theirs MDB land and the foreign subsidiaries Express Pad Padala Hong Kong PPID BDRO Associates uh, Manila North Tall Waste Corporation SM Catalan Generali Filipinas Holding North Pine Land Incorporated the Land okay. and then you have uh, business of issuer principal products and services so they have deposits remittances Trust services, treasury, transaction banking, credit cards, investment banking, insurance, trade services, wholesale lending, and international debt, leasing. Right. For investors, normally they, of course, 
they look into the details of it, right? But since we're just, you know, trying to get an understanding, so we're just um, having an overview of the content. And then for these subsidiaries and associates, they have BDO Private Bank, Strategic Holdings, Leasing and Finance, Savings Bank, Elite Savings Bank, Capital Investment Corporation, Equimark, NFC, uh, PCIB Securities, Insurance Brokers, MDB Land, Express Padala, BDO Remit, PCIB Europe, uh, Express Padala Frankfurt, BDO, BDRO Europe, Remit Japan, Canada, Manila Tollway, uh, North Tollways, uh, SM Capital, Generality Philippines Holdings, North Pine, Taal, Lansi. Distribution methods of products and services, information here. Status of publicly announced new products or services, and then they also have information about competition, transactions with and or, dependence on related parties, um, patents, trademarks, licenses, franchise, concession, royalty agreement, and labor contracts including durations included as well. Governmental approval of personal uh, principal products or services, so approved by the BSP. Effect of existing or probable governmental regulations on the business. Uh, general banking law, of course. Uh, estimate of amount spent for research and development activities, not applicable to them. Probably did not do anything in that uh, regard. Uh, total number of employees. 24,779 um, Bank has an existing CBA okay. Risk management they have, they have this portion which they implement to you know mitigate the risk that they are exposed to and then um, Description of property properties Okay, they have all of these Normally these are I think buildings that they own in which they're Branches are located or erected. There are a lot. <laughs> How many branches do they have in total? This is 2014, right? It's already 2021, probably more. Uh -huh, so there are a lot of it. I'm just scrolling. Scrolling and everything. Wow. Is this in the thousands or what? Okay, we're almost done, I think. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, done. <laughs> so they have the list of the properties, limitations, properties to be acquired, subsidiaries. Oh, they also have a lot on the subsidiaries. Okay, legal proceedings. Submission of matters to vote. Okay, and then we have the operational and financial information. Stock prices for 2013 quarterly and then 2014 quarterly as well. Holders of security. So the largest is SM Investments, 40.87%. Filipino. PCD Nomini Corp. Non Filipino is 32.38. So you have your foreign investors, right? And then you have this PCD Nomini Filipino, 11.60. Okay, so there are the, all this information. I think they're required to publish the top 20 and the top 100 as well, if I'm not mistaken. Then information and dividends that they have declared in currently and in the previous years. Recent sales of, of unregistered securities within the last three years. Management's discussion and analysis or plan of operations. So for the balance sheet, again, if they, uh, affected changes, uh, depending on what they deem to be more appropriate or more applicable to their transactions. Contingent accounts, income statements, um, their information here, comprehensive income, key performance indicators. So they have the return on average common equity. Decrease, uh, return on average equity, average assets, net interest margin, 2.2. Capital to risk. 14.4 basic earnings per share 6.27 pesos liquidity ratio 38.1 solvency debt to equity 937.3 understandable because they are banks normally in banks the debt is much larger than the equity normal is 90 10 right asset to equity ratio uh 1037.3 percent interest rate coverage ratio 319 
profit margin. Later, we'll have a separate video on, you know, financial analysis of uh, bank uh, financial statements. And we would go over the interpretations of these and how these are helpful in the decision-making process of the company. Okay, so have your additional information there. Balance sheet, uh, contingent accounts again, income statement, comprehensive income, KPI. I think they're required to present three years. In most companies, only two years, current and in the previous for the banks. I think they are required to present three. The current year, previous year, plus the year before that. Okay. Past and future financial condition and results of operation. Prospects for the future or plans of operation. Okay. Material changes. Uh, financial statements. Changes in and disagreements with accountants on accounting and financial disclosure. Has not had any. <laughs> so there is that. Audit and audit related fees. Who's their auditor? They don't decide. Putting buy in and around. Alright. Control and compensation information for their directors and executive officers. Meeting education, the names. Okay. Uh, normally, they provide these to show as well that the people that are managing the bank are, you know, experts in the field, reputable people, have their uh, achievements, and they have enough knowledge there. They are, you know experts in the field essentially right so they did they did provide you know the age and then the what they call that uh, work experiences and the educational attainment of their uh, directors okay so there are a lot role of the chairperson and president senior executive officers of the bank okay there are a lot as well uh, I'm gonna skip, skip, skip. Did they include a lot? They did in, they did it. They, did they include all of their managers, supervisors, officers? Okay, done. Uh, board and senior management performance, significant employees, family re relationships, involvement of directors in legal proceedings. Uh, none of the directors have been subject to okay. the last five years. Executive compensation, salary. How much is it? Is this in hundred thousands or in millions? Let's have those figures. Um, compensation of directors and officers. Director, director's fees. Employment contracts, termination of employment, and change in control arrangement. Okay, these are for the, what they call that, stockholder. Security ownership of management. For the directors, I think, how much do they own? Number of shares that they own. These are nominal, though, that was <laughs> one, one share only. Um, certain relationships related transaction. After that, we have the corporate governance. Um, I think they attach the report at the end of this document. And then the exhibits and schedules. What are these? Um, summary of the report. First quarter of 2018 are set for. Okay. Uh, basically events after the reporting date. Normally. Or, you know, significant transactions or events that happened involving them okay all right we're now going to see the audited financial statements because we have here a statement of management responsibility the management is responsible for the preparation of the financial statement and then the auditor would be you know checking whether they are in compliance with accounting standards their auditor back then 2014 and Araulo. Um, what is the opinion? Present fairly in all material respects the financial position at BDO Unibank and of the parent bank as at December 31, 2014 and 2013 for the period ended December 31, 2014. Okay. 
in compliance. Emphasis of matter. Um, the parent bank presented supplementary information required by the BIR for the year ended as in a supplementary schedule filed separately from the basic financial statement. Responsibility of the management, supplementary information presented for purposes of additional analysis and is not required not a required part of the basic FF prepared in accordance with PFRS. Neither required the disclosure under PSE. I'm oh, sorry, SEC rules and regulations. Okay. So, um, content of the audited FS. So, you have your statement of financial position or the balance sheet. So, you have the assets of the company, cash, uh, other cash items due from BSP because, you know, they deposit uh, some of their money to BSP. Due from other banks, they do lend to one another. Trading and investment securities, loans and other receivables. Normally, these are, you know, um, short-term loans to uh, either businesses or individuals. Premises, furniture, fixtures, and equipment. So, they are either building and then, of course, the office equipment. Investment properties, other resources. So, total resources or total assets. Is this in billion? Okay, amounts in million pesos. So, this is million plus million. One billion. One point eight billion. Liabilities and equity, deposit liabilities, so 1.4 billion, bills payable, 100 million, subordinated notes payable, 10 million, other liabilities, 81 million. Okay, wait. Amounts in millions and pesos. Oh, so is this 1 trillion? 1.8 trillion already. You're going to have to add six zeros at the end. Okay. All right. So that's the statement of financial position. This is the statement of income. So you have your interest income. The bulk of the revenue uh, earned by banks come from uh, the interest that they charge on borrowing. Okay. Interest expense, uh, the interest that they pay to the depositors. Net interest income, impairment losses, net interest income after impairment losses. Impairment losses if they have uh, borrowings wherein uh, the borrower are no longer paying, okay? Kumbaga in default or non-performing. Other operating income, other operating expense, profit before tax, tax expense, they pay corporate income tax. And then net profit attributable to shareholders of the parent bank, non-controlling interest, earnings per share, basic, and diluted. Diluted is whenever there are, you know, convertible um, securities. Okay, and then we have, what's this? Statements of, statements of comprehensive income. Again, they, you know, present three years. So we have 2014, 2013, 2012. All CI items that will be reclassified subsequently to P&L. So unrealized gains or losses on available for sale securities, transfer of realized gains, um, net gain or losses on AFS securities, net of that, translation adjustment related to foreign operations. So, you know, the changes in foreign exchange rate would also affect uh, their, you know, investments in foreign operations. Okay, I, items that may not be reclassified to P&L, actuarial gain or loss on remeasurement of retirement benefit, reversal of revaluation increment, and then we have that. Okay, this one is the statement of change in equity, um, any increase or decrease in the common equity, preference shares, um, increase in their retained earnings due to uh, profit, and then of course declaration of dividends. To the shareholders okay a statement of cash flow so uses and sources of cash okay they have normally um, interest income interest received interest paid interest expense impairment losses uh, depreciation and amortization share in net profit of associates fair value what's this fair value loss or gain income from Acquisition and subsidiary. So there's a lot to say. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you could go over the contents of this, the different items. Okay? And then later in a separate video, we'll have another more in-depth um, discussion and analysis of the financial statement. Okay? 
So will these are the notes supporting the contents of uh, the face of the financial statements. The face of the financial statements are the 4D. Statement of financial position, the balance sheet, statement of financial performance, the income statement, changes in equity, and then the cash flow. Okay, and then the, the notes is also an integral part of the whole set of financial statements. So included in the notes to FS, of course, you have your corporate matter, incorporation and operations, normally history, you know, establishment history, what they've done over through the years, summary of significant accounting policies that they have, uh, that they, what do you call that, implement or abide to, okay, basis of uh, preparation of financial statements, adoption of new and amended IFRS, RPAS, okay, and then... Essentially, um, these are the accounting standards that uh, they follow with regards to the different items that you know they present on the face of the FS. Uh, this this part here is quite a lot. <laughs> um, segment reporting, financial assets, still part of the accounting standard. Uh -huh, the different items. Okay, and then after this part here, note number two pa rin. There is a lot. Note number three is about significant accounting judgment and estimates. Okay. Um, still in, you know, accordance with accounting standards. And they have your risk management. This one is being required by the DSP. Okay, so to manage the risk, what do they do? Okay. Related to the use of financial instruments, including derivatives, accepts deposits, uh, observes the following framework responsible for policy formation, coordination, disseminates of policy, okay. and then they uh, mention the types of risks that they are exposed to and how they mitigate those risks. They have your liquidity risks, um, these are their exposures. And then market risk, foreign exchange risk, the exposures that they have, the items exposed to those risks, interest rate risk, all right, the items again, and then um, what else do they have? Price risk, credit risk, exposure to credit risk, all right, different types. Items exposed to those risks. Mm -hmm. have their collaterals, concentrations of credit risk, operational risk. Okay, and then after that, they have their segment reporting. Um, you know, because they have branches and they also normally provide um, monthly and quarterly reports to the regulatory authorities. And of course, they have, you know, different... Uh, <laughs> Types of services, services, okay. types of different departments. They have their deposits, they have their leasing department, they have their credit card department. Categories and upsetting of financial assets and financial liabilities. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh huh. Or is note number seven? There's actually a lot going on here. Seven. Okay, so these are um, schedules supporting the face of the financial statement. So the cash ba and balances with the BSP. Um, in the face of the financial statement, what we see there is just the ending balance. But for the breakdown, they're provided in the schedule. So you have that um, cash due from other banks, trading and investment securities. Uh, they have these financial assets at fair value for profit or loss, government bonds, that's the bulk of their investments, derivative financial assets, and then other debt securities. Equity securities quoted uh, a very small portion only. Okay, and then what else? AFS securities available for sale. These are short-term investments. Okay. Um, HTM investments held to maturity, so normally these are long-term uh investments um let's say bonds that are five years or ten years or either corporate or government bonds 
the classification of investment securities, loans and other receivables. Okay, there's a lot, right? <laughs> Different types of loans and receivables. Financial and insurance activities, wholesale and retail, manufacturing, real estate, activities of private household, electricity and gas, transportation. So they do um, have this type of breakdown for that. Okay. They do support various industries. Okay, um, breakdown of total loans, premises, furniture, furniture, uh, fixtures, and equipment, so the properties that they own. Uh huh. Investment properties. Breakdown. Other resources. So you have your different tax equity investment. Um, deposits under escrow, foreign currency notes and points and hand, bank branch licenses, receivable from SDP, real properties for development and sale, goodwill, retirement benefit asset, computer software, um, non current assets held for sale, prepaid documentary stamps, margin deposits, dividend receivable, return checks, what's this, inter office float items, others, equity investment, so they have, uh, normally they are, you know, um, subsidiaries and affiliates, associates. Uh, more details on that. And then we have allowance for impairment. Okay. So normally these are for the receivables as well because not all receivables can be collected because some of them can no longer pay off their debt. Okay. So they uh, set up allowance for impairment. Deposit liabilities, demand or checking. Then you have savings deposit and then time deposit. Okay. Due to other banks, due to customers. Majority of it are from customers, of course. A lot of people deposit their money into banks. Uh, Philippine pesos, foreign currency. Maturity profile, uh, less than one year, one to five years, beyond five years. So majority of their holdings are still short-term investments, right? Uh, that is, you know, to support the liquidity of the bank. So they prefer to put more money into short-term investments. Bills payable, uh, foreign banks, senior notes, deposit substitutes, local banks, BSP. Okay, um, what's it? Uh, other liabilities, accounts payable, manager, manager's check, accrued expenses, lease deposits, derivative with negative fair values, outstanding acceptances payable, withholding taxes payable due to principal, capitalized interest due to BSP and pressure of the Philippines, BIR or BTR, and earned income, and then you have your other. Okay. Equity, capital management, and regulatory capital because they are, you know, publicly traded, uh, those part of the requirements by the PSC. Okay, so information about the equity. Okay, and then you have your tier 1 capital, tier 2, we've mentioned this from before. Capital ratios, total qualifying capital expressed as a percentage of total risk weighted assets, 14.4, tier 1 capital, 12.1. Uh, total CEC1 ratio 12.2. Okay. Uh, huh, capital composition, capital stock, preferred shares, common shares, BDO American Depository Receipt Program, termination of global Re depository receipts by Prime Bridge, surplus free, surplus reserves, out of reserves, interest income. So again, bulk of their revenue come from uh, the interest and loans and other receivables. Trading investment securities, mababa na. It's quite low. Uh, due from BSP and other banks, others. Okay. So the bulk is still low. Uh, the interest from loans and other receivables. Okay. Be it for the consol consolidated bank or the parent bank. Interest expense. Okay. Deposit liabilities, bills and pay bills payable and other liabilities. Other operating income and expenses. So they have service charges, fees, emissions, trading gains, trust. Fees, foreign exchange gains or losses, income from assets sold or exchange, dividend income, miscellaneous. So this is for the operating income, right? And then for the operating expenses, they have first compensation and benefits of their workers, employees, taxes and licenses, occupancy or rent, 
uh, fees and commission, insurance, security, clerical, messengerial, and janitorial, advertising, representation, and entertainment, repairs and maintenance, utilities, traveling, supplies, litigation, uh, lawsuits, uh, telecommunications, information technology, freight expenses, amortization of, computer software, others. Okay. So those are normally their expenses. Compensation, so they have the breakdown pa here. Post-employment benefits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Related party transactions because, you know, again, uh, exposure limit. So dosri. Um, deposit liabilities, other transactions with associates, related parties, and their common ownership, key management personnel, retirement plan. Thus, three loans, deposit liabilities, other transactions with subsidiary CFA. Uh, essentially, their part is BDO, Unibank, and then the parent bank, right? They're monitoring this to ensure that, you know, uh, they would not be influenced much. The management of the bank would not be influenced by any group of people. Okay. Uh, deposits from related parties, transactions with retirement plan. Right. Moving on. Move along. So we have trust operation. Uh, one of their departments, right? They are also a trust company. Mergers and acquisitions. What, uh, they have acquired in recent years. Mm -hmm. Taxes, current and deferred taxes, compliance with tax laws, you know, payment of taxes to the BIR. You have your NOLCO allowance for impairment, NOLCO, MCIT, others. Gross receipt tax, okay. documentary stamp tax. For all those transactions, and then you have your earnings per share. This one is, um, what do you call that? Uh, information useful for potential investors, or for existing investors, of course. That for, you know, er, uh, if you buy one share, the basic earning per share is 6.27, 6 pesos and 27 cents for 2014. Okay. Mm, what else information? Selected financial performance indicators. Okay, return on average equity. So they already have this information. Later, we would be discussing this and then we would be interpreting uh, these ratios. Okay, what do they mean? Are they good? Are they bad? Do, do you want these figures to be higher or do you want them to be lower? Okay. This information. Events after the end of the reporting period that has a significant effect on the operation, significant information that may, um, you know, affect or influence an individual's decision on whether to invest or not, or in it, essentially stakeholders' claim. Commitments and contingencies, so litigations, legal battle, sale of bank card, peace, PE, ACE bonds, all right, other pieces. This the load. I I think the last part is um what are these schedules on the marketable securities. So again, this one I think is required for BSP. Okay, all the securities that are that they are holding. Okay, details on those securities. So they have here. There's a lot. But it's not loading anymore. Loading. Essentially, it's a list or a schedule of all the securities, right? So I think that would be all for this one. The latter part is for their governance, okay? Which would uh, not really a topic for here. Probably you have another topic, uh, good governance or another subject, right? Good governance in which you would be tackling uh, most of that, okay? So you have all this information. Okay. okay, so we'll have a different again this discussion on the FS analysis, especially the ratios. So we'll end this one here. Thanks and bye.